so we're here for part uh, 60, no, not 60, 73 ish of the Summer of Games. And there is one slight issue with planning out all the games in advance, you know, planning out all the episodes. What I'm going to do is that if something goes wrong with any of the games or. I don't know, I just can't find, like, anything to do when I feel that I could play the next game and do a bunch in it. Um, you know, I can just go on to the next one. So, for some I unknown reason, like, I have no idea why it's not working, I can't play GTA 4. I don't know why, and it makes no sense to me why I can't play it. And technically I can, but it's not going any further than this. This is the screen it's stuck on. Now things happening. It went further before. Don't know how to do anything else. <sighs> and I'm just annoyed. Because I can't do anything. I, I can't do anything other than, like, try to... Like, like, I just can't do anything in order to, like, try to get this to happen. Like... I, I just... I, uh, so annoying. So that means that all of my episode numbers are going to be wrong from now on. At least on my thing. And I have to figure out how to do this. And there it goes. So I can't play GTA 4 because for some reason it's not working. Um, I don't know. I'll see if I can get it to work at all. I don't know what's wrong with it. But I'll see if I can like figure out some other way to get it to work. But we're not playing it for this series, because, you know, we can't. So, the next game on the list is Trove, which I don't know what it is, but we'll find it out. We'll find out eventually. Yes, yeah, so this is the next game on the list. This is supposed to be part 74, but, you know, since GTA 4 decided not to work, and I wanted to, you know, actually do something, yeah. I, I don't. I, mm. So I don't exactly know what game it is or what exactly it is. It's I don't know some sort of game. Well, you see, I don't remember having a fucking glyph account. Oh my god. <laughs> What, what, I don't, I don't remember having a glyph account. I don't know if I've ever played this game. I probably haven't. Like... I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do right now. This is, this is making me angry. <sighs> uh. Well, looks like we're not playing that either. Because <laughs> I have to create an account I don't need to have really so thanks a lot for that well the good thing is the next thing on the list is basically the same fucking thing we did last time <sighs> Europa Universalis 4 is the next game on the list being the third fucking game we've done this episode hallelujah okay there's nothing there Fuck the... Mm. 
the screen to press play or to do anything. I just get so tired of like things not working. So when things aren't working like for a series, it's it's even more annoying. Ay ay ay. I should have changed the aspect ratio, but I was just like, who cares? It just annoys me. So, EU4. Um, last time we did Crusader Kings 2, and um, that is, this is basically, like, relatively the same thing, by the same company. It's, you know, basically the same gameplay, just a slightly different time. Um, this, I think, is a little bit more around uh, the time of, like, the ridiculous amount of explorers, I think. I think, I'm not totally sure, but it was sort of around that time. You know, like the 1400s or 1500s compared to like the thousands. Just, I don't, I don't know. More around the uh, 15th and 16th centuries rather than like the 11th century. So, that, that's if I remember right. Um, other than that, there's really no else that's different as far as I know. So, you know, that's, that's about all I got here. Just gotta wait for this all to load. And like last time, I'm not gonna know how to do anything, and I'm gonna try to make the episode shorter, because I realized afterwards that it was like 45 minutes. So, I'm gonna try to make this a little bit shorter, I don't know. I mean, obviously, that, that's, that the whole thing happened before this, but yeah. Okay, so let's go here. Turn that down so if you can hear me. Um, and then, uh, whatever, okay. Oh, wait, hopefully that, uh, okay, good. Um, Alright, let's go for single player. Wait, hold on, back up. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do anything! What? What? Why? Just wanted to go back to the main menu. God. Uh, come on. Uh, why? I just want to play some games. You know, I, I made the series because, like, I want to make some videos on all my games and have a reason to do so. Have a reason to, like, get rid of or keep some games. You know, just, like... <sighs> Fuck's sake. Options are all good. Tutorial. Fuck's sake. Okay. Alright, we're gonna do this, I guess, because this is about the best I can do, so we're gonna do the basic tutorial, might do some of the rest of this, I don't know, we'll see. I might end up just, you know, stopping, like I did last time. Uh, today's been a rough day. Okay. So you can minimize... This, inter this interface, anytime we look in the minimize button... To show it again, you can simply click the maximize button. Uh, you can at any time pause the game by pressing the spacebar button or by clicking the time control interface. You can speed up or slow down the game by using the time control interface or pressing the plus button or the minus button on your keyboard. Uh, unpause the game and wait until the 1st of January to continue.
When you pause Europa Universalis 4, you can keep playing by issuing orders and taking control of the situation. In peacetime, you may want to speed up time, while in wartime, you may want to slow down or pause the game to give the conflict your full attention. Uh, you can use your mouse pointer to move the camera by moving it either top, bottom, left, or right sides of the game screen. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard. Do it by holding do it by holding the mouse scroll wheel and moving the mouse. Or you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard or do it by holding the mouse scroll wheel and moving your mouse. So like ah okay. Uh and uh if you click the mini map in the lower right corner of the screen you'll move the camera to the to the to to that location of the map. So I moved over there and then I can move it back. Good. Um, that location of the world. Um, okay, you often need to change your zoom to get a better view of the world and what's going on. You need to zoom out by using the scroll wheel on your mouse or by clicking the zoom out button located near the bottom right corner of the screen. Shit. There we go. Now that you've zoomed out, try zooming in. Instead, you can zoom in by using the scroll wheel on your mouse or by clicking the zoom in button. Okay, near the mini map, obviously. That's close enough. Uh, let us see if you can understand how to use the camera. Try finding certain problems by moving the camera and zooming in and out. Follow the arrow until you find the province. Uh, when you find the province, the arrow will snap and point down towards it. Follow the arrow north and find the left, left click. Uh, you now have learned how to control a camera. In the next chapter, you'll learn about controlling armies and fleets. Uh, unit control. Rebels have taken over the province of Pale. You must defeat them. Select the army stationed in the London province by clicking on it or holding the left mouse button and dragging the selection box over the enemy. Over the army. Select the Royal Army. Now that you've selected the army, right click on any province and move it there. Get to Pale. First, you need to go to Gwynedd. Have the army selected and right click on Gwynedd and unpause the game so the game moves there. Uh, where is it? I don't, I don't know where that province is. It's that one, okay? Yes, and then I'm going to unpause the game. Okay, they're getting there. Okay, you'll need to transport your army to Pale by boat. Click Attach to Transport button to load the army onto the ships at Gwynedd's port. Uh, when a transport ship has units attached to it, it leaves the harbor. All units will be embarked onto the ship. Select your army. Click attach to transport. And then your units or your troops are now attached to the Royal Navy in Port Gwynedd. You to transport troops across the Irish Sea. You need to select the fleet by clicking on it or dragging a selection box over it. Select the Royal Navy located in Gwinnett Port. I, okay. Uh, to move your fleet, right click Irish Sea Province. Once your fleet moves out of port, the attached units will be embarked on ships. The game is moving. <laughs> um. Uh, disem disembarking troops have the fleet selected and then click transport button to select your army. Uh, now that your army is selected, right click on the Pale Province where the rebels are in order to move your troops there. Um, yes, I think they're going. Alright, we're going. Um, when your army is now fighting the rebels in Pale, when the battle is over, you will have to besiege the province because it has been taken over by the rebels. The battle window will appear whenever you have selected an army that is engaged in battle. Remember to unpause the game. Oh, it's it's paused because they paused it, apparently. 
that really wasn't difficult. Uh, you have defeated the rebels on the battlefield, but the city is still under rebel control. Your army is besieging Pale, and it will take some time before the defenders will surrender. The time it takes to perform certain actions of sieging has been reduced in the tutorial during a regular game. Uh, if things may take longer. Obviously, um, they need to press play, I assume. And then it will eventually take care of that. Uh, victory! You have defeated the rebels and recaptured Pale. You have completed chapter 2 of the tutorial. The next chapter you will learn about production. The book goes seamlessly from one chapter to the next. Uh, in this chapter you will learn about recruiting, recruiting regiments, building ships, and constructing buildings. All production takes place in a province. Click London on the map to, to continue. Each province is different and has Differing eco different economic or military value depending on such things as base, tax, trade, power, strategic location, or what kind of trade goods they produce. Is that those blue things say anything? Okay. You'll learn more about these values later. Uh, provinces are where all unit production take place. You can recruit regiments, build ships, and hire mercenaries. Uh, armies consist of regiments that can be of three different types, infantry, cavalry, or artillery. Each regiment has a thousand soldiers. Click Recruit Regiment. In the Recruit Regiment window, you'll see a list of units available for recruitment. Recruiting a regiment will cost you 1,000 manpower in addition to du ducats. Um, I think that's what it is. Uh, manpower is an important resource that regenerates over time. Without sufficient manpower, you cannot train new armies or reinforce existing ones. You can see your manpower in the top left corner of the screen. Uh, that, yes. Uh, recruit any regiment. Uh, let's go with that one, I guess. Is that good? Okay. You can build ships by selecting a coastal province and clicking the Build Ship button. There are four... Now, there are four different types of ships, heavy ships, light ships, galleys, and transports. Click back to go to the province view. Uh, and then click the build ship button. Uh, where is it? Where's the build ship button? I don't know if that's there. <laughs> where's the build ship button? Build ship. Oh, it's right there. Um, uh, heavy ships are large warships that excel in combat. Light ships are faster ships that are mainly used to protect your trade, but are also useful for exploration. Galleys are cheaper warships that should be used in inland seas. And lastly, there are also transport ships to fire your troops over water. Build any ship in London to continue. I'm going to go with... I don't know which one is which. I'm going to assume that's the heavy ship. That's the light ship. That's the, the other one. <laughs> That's the galley, obviously, because it says it, and that's the, the the whatever the inland ship or whatever it is, or that's the that's a transport ship, I think. All right, I'm gonna go with that one. Um, uh, buildings can be constructed to make improvements to provinces. Im Im improvements can vary from increased tax income to more powerful forts to increased trade. Constructing buildings is vital for strengthening your economic and military power. Open the buildings tab to continue. Uh, buildings are categorized in, in different categories according to their use. Some buildings within the same category will price others and are marked by yellow arrows, while others, such as the university, can be built independently of the others. Construct any building in London. Jesus. Um, it's a lot of buildings. Let's go for that, I guess, because that's a, probably a pretty good one there. Uh, there are two different queues for production of province. The unit queue allows you to build either a ship or recruit a regiment. You can also queue buildings. The building queue allows you to either construct the building, make core, convert religion, or change culture. Each of the two queues can do one thing simultaneously. Uh, as an empire grows larger, it becomes more difficult to manage. A production interface will help you with constructing larger amounts of buildings or training troops. Selecting a building from the list will update the map mode with information regarding where you would get the most benefit. Uh... Select a unit from the list and then click on the map to start production. You can either click directly on the map or click the plus icon. Plus icons. Uh, clicking a province more than once will queue the ship or unit. Start production in five different provinces and then remember to unpause the game. Um, let's go for, let's just go for some of these and then, oh man. Um, 
boom, boom. Let's just kind of find some provinces that we can go for. Uh, sure, let's do that, I guess. I mean, that was a bit more than we were expecting. Uh, this concludes chapter 3 production. Next chapter, you'll learn about war. We will show them! Uh, when you declare war on a target you want, it casts its belly on them. If you do not have a cast its belly or justification for war, you will suffer negative effects from declaring war on them. Click the Leinster province, then click diplomacy, then declare. Declare and select declare war. Um, oh sh okay, that's, that's uh, it's over here. Leinster is in so we're there, so click diplomacy. Declare war. Say, oh, I don't have one. Well, I guess we'll confirm. I mean, I I. <laughs> I don't have anything. Move your troops to the Leinster province to engage their army. Uh, you must also besiege and occupy their province before you can continue. If you want to bring all your troops, you will have to ferry them over and merge them into an army. Okay. Um. There. Solid. Um. To deal with like crossing the channel again. Um, uh, can I, so there's like a, shit, <laughs> um, it's about all I can do, like, at the moment, um, attach to transport, and then we can send this over here. And transports over over here. Shit. Are we good? Do we do it? Okay. I think I fucking I do. Hold on. Things are happening over here. Uh, to demand tribute in a peace deal requires you to have a certain amount of war score. The war goal reduces the war score cost of that province by 50%. When you claim on a province reduces the cost of diplomatic power by 50%. Click the Alliance of Province and click Diplomacy and cl select Sue for Peace. Um, sign a peace treaty. Oh, it just says, it just says sign a peace treaty of any kind. Um, uh, it's, fuck, uh, sure, send demand. Yeah, I think it might work anyways, so I don't really care. Do we have to unpause it? Do we have to, okay. Um, well that unsurprisingly worked. Uh, when a war ends, your two nations will have a truce unless you annex them because they can, because then they no longer exist. You can see which countries you have a truce with and when they expire by hovering the mouse over the truce alert. Attacking someone who you have a truce with will incur severe penalty to stability and is not recommended. This concludes the basic tutorial for Europa Universalis 4. You can replay the tutorial anytime if you wish to do so. Play the advanced game mechanics part or find out more about Europa Universalis 4's features in the Spanish Big Empire Beginner Campaign. Click exit. <sighs> Hallelujah. God damn it. <laughs> Why does it, like, restart the game every single time I, like, go to the main menu? That's kind of a pain. It's very weird. But, uh, that shall be the end of this... This crazy... Episode, and... I'm gonna go relax for a while, because I don't want to deal with... Hopefully I don't have to deal with this stupidity anymore. Two games not working... I can't do anything about it as far as I know. So that's good. It's always wonderful when I got I can't do anything. <sighs> it's always a good time here. I don't know. 
there you go. That was EU4. Next time we have... Well then. That's about all I got for what's happening next time. <laughs>